just surrender yourself to him. You will then feel his grace. And that's so ironic that you have two people that are on, on very different ends of the spectrum, an atheist and a religious person, and they basically have the same problem, which is they can't get over the fact that their um, perception is limited. God, this force of life, eventually calls all of us back home. Recess is going to end, you know what I mean? God calls us, God cuts the thread. That's from the Chongzu. The Divine Mother Sarada Devi told us, quote, One realizes God in proportion to the intensity of one's feeling for him. He who is really eager to cross the ocean of the world will somehow break his bonds. No one can entangle him. So we experience God through our own capacity to understand God, him, it, whatever, however you identify the higher power. But within this life, within this human life, as we are these life forces that are animating the body, all we have is what? Our perception. Now, of course, you could, you could have a knee-jerk reaction and say, well, isn't that a very worldly and limited way to see the world? You know, it could. If you lean on your own understanding, yes, it could. But if you understand that we cannot understand everything, which is a very hard thing for people to grasp, that's something that may scare a lot of people, to tell them we cannot understand everything, that, ironically, will set you free. And, you know, I say ironically because many logical thinking people, people who are very plagued by over-logical thinking, like myself for, for a long, long time, we may say, that's pretending. You're just, you're just pretending. And what you're saying is not based on anything. And to that I say, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's literally the point. So if we can agree that there are levels of consciousness that are below us, like a dog, or a rock, whatever it is, intellectually and consciously. How on earth can you ignore the possibility that there are levels of intellect and consciousness that are above us? Hmm? Like, how? How? If you can agree, just because we are the most smart animals, you know, or things, you know, that we know of intellectually and consciously, supposedly, by our own perception, you think that there's nothing above us? And not literally above us, but intellectually and consciously. You think that why? Because we can't measure it? Because where we are in our evolution completely prevents us from understanding more. Because it's like, okay, great. Our perception is limited. Then what? Then how can we understand God at all? Well, the answer is we can't. But we can get a glimpse. The fact that humans are the only animals that are aware of their mortality they're aware that they're going to die. They're very, very, we're conscious of ourselves. And with that, we cannot know everything, but we can know that we cannot know everything. Do you see what I'm saying here? So we are to accept that we are limited beings, which we are, it's a fact. And we can maybe only get a glimpse of what God really is, even if it is a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth. And, you know, we may see that glimpse in many different ways. We may see it looking into the eyes of another person, someone that we love, maybe somebody that we've never met before. We could see it in the eyes of a newborn baby. We could even see it in nature. We could see it looking into the distance, the vast ocean, whatever it is. But we have the capability to get a glimpse, okay? And it is important to understand that. Because a lot of people say, well, we can't put an equation on it, but we can feel it. We know it's there. We know something is there. And I'm not saying a, a, ma a man with a beard. I'm saying there is a, there is more. There is more than what meets the eye. There's more than what the brain can calculate. And that's okay. Like I said, that may scare a lot of people. But um, like I said, ironically, that will set you free. Because understand that if that glimpse wasn't there, if we couldn't sense that at all, every atheist would be correct. But the atheists may argue that it is absurd to say that there is a God, at least in the ways that we may imagine it, within our own capacity, right? But then the flip side is a religious person may say, well, it is absurd to say that all of this literally came from nothing. And you know what's the funniest part is that they're both right. They're both correct. Why don't we all get along then? 
And why do we waste our time, you know, arguing about these things, these silly, silly things? You know what it is? It's like two calculators trying to do like extremely, extremely sophisticated, I don't know, calculus or statistics that it can't do. Like little $1 calculators arguing. That's what it is. It's the ego. It's our need to be right. Getting lost in, in silly labels and semantics that don't even mean anything. The atheist in this example is ironically not open-minded enough to be open to a higher power outside of his or her perception. But then you have the religious person. The religious person in the example also is not, um, ironically, is not open-minded enough to be open to the idea that God is outside of his or her perception and what is said in their religious doctrine, right? And that's so ironic that you have two people that are on, on very different ends of the spectrum, an atheist and a religious person, and they basically have the same problem, which is they can't get over the fact that their um, perception is limited. How silly humans are, you know? And I don't say that like I'm up on a hill or anything like that. I don't, I want this to come off like I'm, I'm being high and mighty here, like, uh, or anything like that. Like, you know, we have to be able to laugh at things and there is a kind of aspect of just irony and humor and in, in laughing at some, like a lot of these things and disagreements that people have, you know, in life. But it is also very sad. We're all human, okay? Like, I don't mean that, I, like I said, I'm not saying this like, uh, I'm not speaking down at anyone who's an atheist or a religious person. Understand that that was just an example to understand my, my point here on the importance of perception and seeing things within our own capacity. But you know, when the egos clash, in such a manner, you know, I can't help but think of like the calculators, two one dollar calculators trying to do statistics or or even like children on a playground, right? Children on a playground that are fighting over whatever the same way, the same way adults do, the ego clash. And then meanwhile, you know, I just want to be over here. I'm all on the other side of the playground like, hey, we got to we got to recess ends in 10 minutes anyway. So can we you know, can we just have a little fun? Can we just smile? Who cares? Who cares who's the king of the playground? You know what I mean? God, this force of life, eventually calls all of us back home. Recess is going to end. You know what I mean? God calls us. God cuts the thread. That's from the Chongzu. And quite frankly, you know, very frankly, our time is better spent serving each other, not serving the collective egos that prowl about the earth, seeking the ruin of our souls and well-being. Just surrender yourself to him. You will then feel his grace.